What's up, fellow fans of Clash of Clans? It is your host, Galadon, and oh man, okay, this, this is an episode I've been waiting for for a while. Super excited to bring you the fully maxed out queen in action, and of course, maybe not the ideal uh, troop combination, let's just be honest. But thank you guys for stopping by, and thank you so much for being patient, letting me raid for what seems like literally, actually, probably months, right, without heroes. Here we are, episode 87 of No Cash Clash, and finally, for the first time really at Town Hall 9, the Archer Queen is seen in action. Now, we will be bringing you all sorts of different Queen-involved, you know, Queen Walk, Queen Charge raids in the future. Today, of course, I had kind of the leftover Dragloon, so we tried to incorporate this Air Army with a Queen Walk or a Queen Charge, and it's actually working out pretty well. Now... Players sometimes ask me, what is the difference between Queen Walk and Queen Charge? And it's funny because when I was at the World Championship Qualifiers last year, I found that it actually depends upon the country you're in. Uh, in China, for the most part, they just call it Queen Healer. They don't call it Queen Walk or Queen Charge. Other people call it the Angel Queen. Some call it the Immortal Queen. But for the most part, Queen Walk is when the Queen goes around the outside of the village destroying those outer structures. A Queen Charge is more that focused dive into the base after a specific area or defenses or CC, defending heroes, that sort of thing. And I generally will go with the phrase Queen Charge, although like I said, a lot of players will interchange the phrases and uh, it's just whatever. You call it whatever you want, right? All these fancy names. Just gonna get in there and smash some bases, hopefully grab some two stars against the tens and some triples against the nines. As you can see right here, this, oh man, this felt so good to see an Archer Queen with some healers, four healers by the way, just, you know, withstanding two Expos, rolling right in, no fear, don't care about all those Teslas, the Defending Queen, the Inferno Towers, she's got this, the level 30 Queen ability, and she takes out the Town Hall for the second star. Oh man, I mean, I don't know, it just, it feels like this account has finally grown up a little bit, and then, check the loot, yeah, not bad. So I feel like we have entered a more challenging portion of Clash of Clans gameplay, and that is these multi-staged attacks. And while certain parts of Clash of Clans are challenging, others, like using Code Galadon, are not challenging. They're super easy. You go to settings, you go to more settings, you scroll all the way to the bottom, and right there it says creator boost. You type in G-A-L-A-D-O-N, and that's it. It doesn't cost you a penny, but you could be one of the many, many people that benefits from free gold passes from me, yours truly, every single month as a thank you, and of course, tons of charity giving as well. So thank you guys again, sincerely for doing that, especially when the gold pass and the packages roll around. It means a lot if you double check it, make sure it's active because it does expire every seven days. Okay, so here we go. We're in there again with Queen Charge. This time, you'll notice it is a Town Hall 9 that we're going up against. It's a respectable Town Hall 9, not a war maxed out, everything ready to go Town Hall 9. And that's one of the things I've noticed that I've been counting on lately, and that is no Clan Castle. Like, I don't even think about the idea that a Clan Castle could be active. However, as we've begun to push trophies higher and higher through Crystal League, I've noticed that the percentage, the amount of time that a clan castle arrives that comes out on defense is increasing. So it's kind of a natural progression of the game. As a Town Hall 9, as you get higher, you're going to run into players that care more about trophies. Because as with any Town Hall level, if you're not really trying, you will find that you float down to a certain level where you kind of hold your own. And right now, we're just right on the border of that. I believe that when we get into Master League, that is when we are going to run into the nines that actually care, that are trying harder, have better bases, and of course, have full clan castles. And that, you know, maybe we'll switch up and start bringing a poison spell for now. I'm rolling the dice. Will I pay for it? You bet. It, it's going to happen, I promise you. But in the meantime, man, the, the Archer Queen is just so much fun. Now, four healers, I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments again. I know that five healers is the standard at Town Hall 13, but thus far, I found that four healers is a pretty good balance. I mean, it doesn't take away too much from the army composition as far as the numbers, but it also does seem to be enough 
to keep the queen up through most situations, even when there's multiple defenses raining down damage upon her. And then, of course, we've got one rage spell that I'm pretty much saving for the Archer Queen. Like, in any raid, I'm always going to try to bring one rage spell just for the queen charge portion, usually early on in case she runs into the defending heroes or something like that, she's got an opportunity to survive focus damage. Right here, this base doesn't survive. That's right, Galadon picking up the triple and another 1.5 million in loot. And notice the league loot bonuses are getting better. They are improving once again as we are heading up back towards our all-time trophy best for this account, but we will surpass it, I promise you. We'll get to that in just a minute, but let's check it out. It is time for another upgrade. This is the last wizard tower, so there it is, the final wizard tower upgrading, and uh, man, it's almost cleaned out over here, right? I mean, just a couple of regular defenses, just like those five, six, okay, six defenses, fine, we'll get there. And then the walls, feeling good, making a little bit more room for all of the other stuff, and then yeah, okay, that... You know, here's the thing. That stuff is going to take a while. My thought is that we will focus on the lab and these bombs, traps, and mines for a while. Maybe for a few weeks before we go. Because, again, I don't want to rush the lab too much. It is going to end up a little bit rushed at some point. Maybe, you know, we'll make the sacrifice once all of these are done upgrading. Skeleton traps, seeking air bombs, air mines, whatever the, whatever they're called. Air Seeking air mines, air bombs, I, whatever. But what I'm saying is... There's going to be this point, and it's already happened, where you're just going to be overflowing, overflowing with elixir and dark elixir because of all that stuff. And that's the point where I need to turn to you guys and say, hey, this is our account. We built it together. What do we do? And uh, hopefully maybe, you know what? Actually, keep an eye out on my community page on my YouTube channel. I'll put a post up there at some point and ask you guys what we should do because I am seriously looking for guidance because here's the thing. This is your account too. And I realize, you know, don't tell Supercell that we're sharing accounts because that is against terms of service. But I do feel like this is your account as well. That This account belongs to all of us. No, you can't play it, uh, just, j just so you know. But I'm saying that it really does because you guys have inspired me. And this is what I wanted to say. Thank you guys so much. Did you know that because of your support for this series, you have gotten me playing Clash of Clans again? And I know that sounds strange, and no, there wasn't a time where I didn't play at all, but here's the thing. I noticed that up until I started this account, that my average day of actually playing the game was only a few minutes, because most of the time I was looking for replays from other players, you know, in Tribe, looking at the pro-level stuff, the really good Legend League attacks, war attacks, things like that. I wasn't actually playing the game that much, because remember, I was not having a lot of fun in Legend League myself, feeling that that was all pointless. But here we are, actually actively playing, I would say at least a couple of hours every single day, if not longer, depending upon what I'm doing. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And then of course, there's CWL, Clan Games, that always keeps me engaged. But during that time that there aren't those other events going on, it's good to be here playing on No Cash Clash. And yes, that was the last Archer Tower. We've got one more builder free. We're going to go with, I think, the air defense. Three days. Okay. And last air defense. I mean, that's that's three defensive upgrades this episode alone. I told you guys we are rolling these episodes quickly, trying to get you caught up. But don't forget, fb.gg slash Gaming is where I live stream every single day. We're about 90 days in a row of live streams without a break. 7 o'clock Pacific. I hope you guys get a chance to stop by. Okay. So, it's looking good. I mean, it's closing in, and the Barbarian King is just about to begin his way to level 30 as well. That is going to be amazing. I can't wait to have two level 30 heroes. Imagine the actual, like, funneling and stuff we can do. I'm going to be crushing bases left and right. Okay, so let's see here. Where do we go next? We've got, you know, oh yes, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, why forget about Dirty Baby Dragon Spam, right? We got to head over here from time to time. And drop some babies, okay? On there. No, not we're not dropping baby. We're dropping baby dragons. Come on. Don't make it sound worse than it is. But yeah, so we're dropping some baby dragons. And yes, okay. Oh, speaking of spam, you guys in the comments told me, oh, Galadon, go with giants and cannon carts, man. 
it seems to be overwhelming in the opinion in the comments. You guys seem to think that may be the strongest strategy at Builder Hall 5. So we're working on it, I promise you. And this episode as well, because, well, you know, my cannon carts are still kind of low level. The only thing that I really worked on early were the baby dragons because, well, they're, they're just fun, right? They're dirty, but they're fun. And this battle was a perfect example of how much fun baby dragons can be. Just by getting that air bomb distracted, we get the baby dragons in here and we're able to get down to, can you see it coming? That's right, this is gonna be a triple. I did not see this coming with only two baby dragons left, but watch the final baby dragon here on the right hand side go in and yes, it goes after the air bombs and here it comes, final seconds. It is gonna be close, but that is right. The baby dragon gets the job done. And she, or he, well, well we, we don't want to assign unnecessarily. It, it is going to run off and pick up the gem mine hiding over here in the corner. And of course, this is the part where I get stressed out. Am I going to beat the other guy on time? Is he three-star in my base too? Because it's kind of rushed. What's well, going to happen? Here comes the baby dragon. Hurry up. There's only a minute 30 left. And you ready for it? What's your prediction? Can we pick up the W or will we lose on time? Well, the correct answer. Here it comes. That's right. It's the victory on time. Big close one right there. Big close one. Ah, whatever. Anyway, not always this lucky. Just just going to show you guys this one real quick. Yeah, 32% zero star. Galadon, good job, bro. How'd you do? Is it time to go home and take a look at how the opponent did? Oh, maybe. Okay, fine. And oh my goodness. Come on. Got to love it right there. The gift from the opponents. And we've cracked 2,100. That's really what I wanted to show you there. I believe that's the first time we've gotten to 2,100 trophies on the Builder Hall since we've been at Builder Hall 5. So perhaps the defenses getting the slow upgrades are making the difference, but I still feel like this is relatively close to the cap where we're going to get at Builder Hall 5. Now looking for something else to upgrade. Again, we're looking towards, that is it right there. Increasing the number of units in an army camp. That is the big one. The giants, they actually don't get it at level 10. So not quite as critical. Same for the bombers. Not really excited about those guys. But here it is right here. Check it out. The cannon carts, they've got a ways to go. I realize that. But at level 10, they get that extra cannon carts. And I feel like that's going to give them that big advantage. So we'll keep working slowly but surely. That is the only thing we're going to upgrade until they make it to level 10 as far as troops. And then the miscellaneous defensive upgrade that will slowly but surely make us stronger. All right. Let's head on over to the status report, check it out, you guys, because the trophy's crawling up on our way towards, that's right, champion. That is my personal best in the Builder Hall side. Picked up a few extra gems today, so we're going to start saving those hard. And then the heroes, the king, come on, man, two more levels, you can do it, brah. All right, for gold, elixir, and the dark elixir, on the grind, almost to the half mil, half bill points, I should say. And then, yes. The quest to champion begins in the No Cash Clash series. How many episodes is it going to take? Make your predictions down in the comments. And thank you in the meantime for making it all the way to the end of the episode. Galafam, you are the true Galafam. And I love thinking about it. Appreciate every single one of you every single day. So stay inside. Wash your hands. Be kind to other people, animals, and planet. I'll see you back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. Galito! Galito! Is it my imagination or are you getting faster?